For the past month, I've spoken a lot about Dave Ramsey and his programs. I'm doing this because he has been the most influential financial advocate or advisor for my own financial journey and for what I have pulled my family through on. His programs, the Financial Peace University, the Financial Coach Master Training Program, and of course his book, The Total Money Makeover and the Baby Steps have truly shaped the way I look at finances. And I am a firm advocate for him because of the progress I have made in my own life. That being said, I don't always agree with him. And I'm going to devote the next four videos, starting with this one, about the four ways that I disagree with Dave Ramsey. Hi guys, it's Tina and thank you so much for coming to my channel. If you're new, please subscribe. I will ask you in almost every video to picture what financial freedom looks like to you so that we can talk about ways to get there. I love talking about financial progress, financial independence, and truly having a vision for your future so that you can establish a plan and set some goals to get there. If you're returning, thank you so much. I appreciate it and I hope that you will like and share. Okay, digging into today's message. The first topic that I have to admit I disagree with Dave Ramsey on is having separate bank accounts. There are three real reasons why I disagree with this message and I will tell you that as a financial coach, I have advised people to combine their account into a singular account for the household. And I do believe this is wise for shared expenses. I have probably over advocated this with at least one of my clients. And in the end, I learned that I might have lost them as a client because of this. I'm going to talk about that situation first, and then I'll dig into a few other reasons and my own personal experience with having separate accounts with my husband. In the example that I was just speaking about, I met with a client a few months ago. While we were talking, they explained to me that they have separate accounts. I know that this had to do with financial infidelity that had occurred. However, I was fresh out of the Financial Coach Master Training Program in which they strongly advocate for having combined accounts. The reason they strongly advocate for this is because they want people to have that singular focus. When you come to it as a united front with all of your resources combined, you're able to more quickly direct your money. You're able to more quickly influence the goal that you are attempting to overcome. So in the situation that you're in debt repayment, having your resources combined into a singular account gives you the visibility you would need to be able to more quickly and more fully direct your resources, your money toward the debt that you're looking to wipe out. Now, the couple that I was working with a few months ago was coping with financial infidelity. One of the two spouses had been extremely irresponsible with money. The reason for it ultimately was that the person was overwhelmed by the debt that they were in and had given up, had given up hope. But in giving up hope, had dug a much deeper hole and had truly harmed the household. The other spouse had no trust, had lost faith and needed to have assurance before the accounts could be combined again. I was fresh out of the Dave Ramsey program and I was not considerate to this. I really focused on communicating the message that the program expressed to me. I encouraged really strongly that they combine their accounts right away again. Because of this, I do looking back, you know, hindsight is 2020 realize I was in error and I did lose the client over this. I've not heard back from them. I'm not surprised by that and I am taking it as a learning opportunity, but I have to be candid with you. I'm a little embarrassed I even made it because in my own household, my husband and I have separate accounts. I feel that I wanted to represent Dave Ramsey because I did advise them with the notion that I came out of the Financial Coach Master Training Program. Had I been honest, however, I would have acknowledged that it's okay to have separate accounts. My husband and I have separate accounts and for a totally different reason. I have out-earned my husband. I have outpaced him in salary 
since our mid-twenties. Because of this, my husband felt strongly that, as a man, he is the provider. He did not want to be in a position where his wife was providing more to the unified household than he himself was providing. He had his account that had direct deposit from his employer, and I had my account that had the direct deposit from my employer. Then what we did is we created another account. This was our family or our household account. Once we both got paid, we agreed upon a certain amount of money that we would both transfer into the household account. The reason we did it this way was because, as I mentioned before, my husband wants to be the provider for this household. He asked me to ensure that we were always contributing an equal amount to our household or to our shared account. This way he always felt that he never was taking advantage of my income, but was firmly the man of the household and a provider for the household. I truly respect this. And to be perfectly honest with you, that was a decision we came to so many years ago, I had forgotten about it. I was telling my husband that I wanted to do this video and he said, well, will you be honest? Will you tell them why we have separate accounts? And I said, sure. The reason we have separate accounts, and this is my third reason why I believe that people could or should have separate accounts is independence, fun money. I had forgotten that he had asked that of me so many years ago for his rationale for having separate accounts because my rationale was totally separate. Growing up for me, my mom was a feminist. She felt very strongly that I should never rely on a man for financial anything. She firmly believed that a woman is privileged to be able to work and that a woman should never put herself in a position where she is fully reliant on a man. She believed in education. She believed in pursuing a career. She received her GED after she became an American citizen and she climbed and scratched and fought for her income. And by the time she retired, she was pulling in almost six figures, which is pretty impressive to me for a woman who had a GED and became an American citizen late in life. I remember her distinctly saying to me that she never wanted for me, what she saw with her mother, which was a woman who was a stay-at-home wife, a stay-at-home mother who had no access to income on her own and had to argue and grapple with her husband at times to make sure that she was given the money she needed to run the household. My mother witnessed this, and because of that, she was very firm in her message to both me and to my sister that we are to in every way possible, ensure our ability to be independent if we need to. If our husbands don't work out for us, we need to know that we should be able to leave them and we should have the financial independence to do so. While my marriage is strong and I don't have to worry about divorce or the financial implications of divorce, I have to acknowledge that my mom's advice was sound for me. It challenged me to be more ambitious. It challenged me to be more strenuous, to have a stronger work ethic, to pursue goals, and it really shaped who I am today. So I do genuinely appreciate what my mother instilled in me. Because of this, I'm very grateful. And I will say as a sidebar, that mentality of independence also contributes to the idea of having a separate account for fun money. My husband and I like to spend our fun money in different ways. And I'll be honest with you, I don't wanna see how he spends his fun money. He would rather go on a guy's trip or go buy a firearm. Me on the other side, I like to use my fun money for extra adventures that the family could have, as well as handbags. And I think that it appalls him sometimes to see how much I've spent on a handbag. And that's the beauty of having separate accounts as well. We have the independence to spend our fun money in the way that we enjoy spending it without having to worry about the other person questioning it because it's not so visible to them. 
it is easier for my husband to hear me say that I just spent $900 on a handbag because I discuss it with him and I show him what I'm buying, but he doesn't have to see the $900 debit from our account. Similarly, I don't have to watch him drop $900 on a firearm that I feel it's ridiculous that he's, you know, building an armory in our basement. Having said all that, I hope this makes sense to you, that you will understand that while having a singular account does strengthen your financial position for attacking those shared goals, it's also absolutely okay to have separate accounts, whether that be because you want to have equality in what your contributions are to the household account, whether that be because you've suffered financial infidelity and you're in the trust rebuilding phase, or whether that be because you don't want somebody to see everything that you have, or put differently, you don't want them to see how you spend your fund money, your independent resources. It is absolutely okay to retain some things just for you, especially if like me, you grew up with an extremely feminist mother. So thank you guys all for watching. Again, if you've liked this video, please subscribe and share the content out. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. Have a great day. Goodbye, you guys.